Welcome to the Coding Loft. My name is Samuel, and today we look at how to set an interval with set interval and how to clear it with clear interval. This is a very common and useful operation, but there's one thing you need to watch out for. So let's jump right in. So I started with an HTML layout that's very simple to understand. We have two buttons, one that starts the interval and one that stops the interval. And then below it, we have a div where we output whatever the current number is that we want to show. I've styled this using CSS, so just to put everything in the center and make it look a bit prettier. Now inside the JavaScript is where the magic happens. So to explain what I have here, I've just made a reference to the start button, which is this button right here. So we say query selector.start interval. That's what I called it. Then below we have the stop button button, which is this button right here. So we use query selector dot stop interval. And then below that we have the output span, which is this zero here on the right, which we get with the class show output. And then just to show you how this works, we have a counter number that starts at zero and we have a function that's called increment counter. So every time we call that function, we increase the counter by one. And then we also print it to the console and we want to show it in our GUI. So we say this output span that we have right here. We want to change the text content to whatever the counter is. We also have two click event listeners. One is for the start button. It listens for a click and one is for the stop button, which also listens for a click. And here is where we will start and stop our interval. First of all, let's just console.log that we are starting the interval. And down here, we just want to console.log that we are stopping the interval. Okay, so now you can see if I click start, it says starting interval. If I click stop, it says stopping interval. But of course, there's nothing there yet. So what we want to do is we want to set the interval. And inside of this set interval function, you specify two things. First, you specify what you want to do. And then second, you specify the length of the interval. So what we want to do is we want to use this function increment counter, which increases our counter by one every time it is called. So here we say increment counter and our interval will be one second. And then down here, we want to clear our interval and we also need to pass in something. Does this work already? Let's find out. If we click start interval, we see that we start interval so every second. Our counter variable gets increased by one and is printed to the console and also to our GUI. The problem right now is stop interval doesn't work because it continues to run the interval because clear interval doesn't know that it needs to stop this interval. And that's the tricky part about setting and clearing interval. And what you need to do is you need to set an interval ID and you specify it up here. And what you do is when you set this interval, you give it to the interval ID. So you say interval ID equals set interval. Now the reason we call this ID is because it will just give a number back. Interval ID is just a number and we will confirm this by saying console.log interval ID and let's also print interval ID. So we see what interval ID actually is. So let's do that. And now when you start interval, we see that interval ID is 10. So this interval ID is a reference to which interval is running here. And that means the only way that we can clear this interval is by passing this interval ID to clear interval. So now when we start our interval, it has the ID of 13. It starts to count and now we can stop it because now clear interval knows it is this interval with the ID of 13 that we need to stop. Now, one thing to watch out for is that you need to specify the interval ID up here and not inside of the event listener. So if you say let interval ID in here and you start the interval and then you stop it, you see that interval ID is not defined because this event listener does not have access to this interval ID. It's only inside of this block that you can access it. That's why we need to define interval ID up here. And then we can also use it in clear interval because it knows what this variable is. So to summarize, first you need to create an interval ID and then you need to set that interval ID to set interval, the function that you want to run and the amount of time that you want the interval to run. And then to stop it, you need to call the clear interval function and you pass in the interval ID. Otherwise, the interval won't stop. Otherwise, the interval won't stop. So did you find this useful? If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.